All right, we're back. So, Aimstrong in the lead for VPs right now, but it's 1-1. Siez, uh, we're about to go on to Samoski winner. We've got three minutes of Observer delay. What are your thoughts? What are you thinking? Thinking that the Centaur on a map full of buildings is going to be pretty good. I think Brits <laughs> in general true. now. That's getting true. These in mid. What do you think? Uh, do you think Aimstrong might maybe throw a minesweeper up there with the centaur this time instead of just <laughs> driving right over a teller mine and then pretty much i would i think i would argue that driving over that mine lost him the game do you think that that's a pretty accurate assessment yeah i mean i think that's probably the major turning point that threw the game into devm's favor is aim and... spends 100 fuel on a unit his shock unit that he expects to do a lot of damage and then it just kind of dies he actually looked like maybe he was gonna come back a little bit with some impressive commando ambushes, finding those snipers at point blank range, but he couldn't make it happen. So I think that centaur was a little too important. I'm probably gonna see him using it again here on Samoski Winter. What, what, what about Devin? What do you think his? What do you think he's thinking about going into this game? Uh, I think it's gonna be quite a hard map for Austere against Brits. I think it's going to be pretty important for him to get maybe two Flamer Pyos out, although then he's going to be lacking a Sweeper. The 2-2-2 is pretty strong on this map, uh, as is the 2-5-1 half track. I don't think we've seen DevM using a 2-5-1, uh, not recently anyways, but with such a long retreat path, it's you know very valuable to be able to reinforce on the field. It looks like Devim has two go-to builds against Brits. He likes to go double sniper, and he also sometimes likes to go double scout car. And I guess it depends on how confident he feels in his sniper versus sniper counter snipe game. So, what do you what do you think he's gonna be thinking against Aimstrong here? Do you think that he's gonna try and just go all in on snipers like he did there in game one, which it kind of worked, but then commandos screwed him over a little bit later? Do you think maybe he's just gonna go with light vehicles on this map? I think on this map, the light vehicles would make a lot of sense. It's very hard for AT guns to cover all of the possible approaches into the center of the map where the snipers are likely going to be. And if you have two 2-2-2s, two, two, uh, the sniper can only engine damage one, which leaves the other one to just chase you all the way home. And once again, this map, the very long retreat paths, having to run through some of the deep snow makes the retreats even longer. Plenty of time for the 2-2-2s two, two, to chase down those snipers and you know secure those kills. So getting out the second scout car really helps not only drain munitions, but also have have exactly the right amount of tools that you need to finish the job on that pesky British sniper. I mean, he could just play snipers of his own. There's so much green cover on the middle of this map that they could just come down to, you know, maybe he wants to say, hey, uh, I counter sniped you a whole bunch in the first game, and I, you know, maybe I'm the better counter sniper, and let me just put my trust in that and see what happens. All right, so without further ado, we're jumping into the game. It's about to begin. Five seconds left on Observer Delay, and here we go. In game. We're going to pause at five, and then we'll count it off. So pause, and we're going to start in three, two, one. Unpause. And Emmy, behind the scenes, whispering in my ear, absolutely 100% insists that we do the introduction. So, without further ado, on the left of Samoski Winter in the blue trunks, it's Aimstrong! Well, I thought I'm, I'm here. Uh, okay, <laughs> Sia didn't want to meet me halfway on this. But oh, I thought Ami was talking about how okay. he's okay. going to do all all right. he'll bring it. He'll bring it for the second player. All Over right, here on it. the right side, in the red, he has fought his way back out of the loser's bracket. It's 1-1. One, one. It's dead even. He's here to beat Aimstrong. Dev M! Yay! He is with the hype. All right. We both... We both proud at that time. <laughs> All right, so see us talk to me about uh, about builds and capping orders. All right, so Devem. yeah, so Devem looks like he's going for his kind of very very typical build. It opens with a grind on MG, and he's probably going to be setting up for a sniper as Billy chooses to go. 
Aimstrong opening his exact same Brit build, so far two infantry sections probably going to pick up a Vickers. I actually got a nice little fun fact to share with everybody during the boring, or sorry, I almost said during the boring game, <laughs> during the early game. And actually DevM, you know, going with what I'm saying and uh, or the opposite of what I was saying, he's actually picking up the Gren squad. So DevM and Aimstrong, I guess, haven't really practiced against each other in Co2, and they tend to avoid each other in auto match so as not to, I guess, you know, hurt each other's ranks and whatnot so they're even in these tournament games they're feeling each other out a little bit of how exactly they like to play in Enco 2. So, you really don't think that they scrim against each other in custom games behind the scenes? I mean they're clan mates you'd think you'd think that they would right? Uh, that's what AE was telling me during our break is that well, I guess when he talked to Aimstrong he said they don't really practice against each other. Now they could be just playing some mind games and be like oh yeah we practice against each other all the time but we want to make people <laughs> think we don't. Uh, you never I guess I guess we cannot really know for sure exactly what what's going on there unless you're monitoring the custom game list and go to at all times. Even then you could set it to where you know no observers are allowed. So Aimstrong going with a very quick sniper. He made nothing except for one infantry section, then platoon command, then sniper. So his capping order, he went straight for the, um, you can see, two strategic points, then immediately for the fuel to get the fuel together for platoon command. He's going to get that sniper out surprisingly early, and DevM is going to get his sniper out surprisingly late. He actually waited a couple squads to make his, so now the British player is going to have a sniper on the field before the Oster player. That's kind of an interesting turn of events. It's a little bit of backwards of what we would normally be used to seeing because, you know, Oscar doesn't have to tech at all to grab a sniper. There's going to be a race, a foot race for the house in the mid, the church, and Devon MG makes it. And I think that's a good time to point out that uh, just a couple patches ago, I'm not sure if that MG would have won that race because the deep snow now has been pretty much completely removed. There's still a little bit of it sprinkled in just a couple random spots, but no longer outside the doors of the houses, no longer in these green cover positions in the central um, village or cemetery or anything, so the map plays very differently now. It's so much more fluid, but it looks like that machine gun might not get away. Taking There it is, sniped by the infantry section in the house. That is the second time that's happened. The exact same thing happened in game one. DevM just throws a machine gun into an aggressive house location, and then infantry section snipe it to death on the retreat. But fortunately, DevM does manage to recover it there with his grenadiers, so he, he doesn't lose the unit this time. Slightly better <laughs> outcome than there in game one, but he made the exact same error in judgment twice in a row. Yeah, it's a little bit unfortunate for DevM that he doesn't get to pick it back up with Pios, we were mentioning on one of our earlier casts. If you can recruit the Pios, you retain their line of sight bonus, and they're much cheaper to reinforce than Grenadiers. And DevM has his own sniper out about to take first shot, so he's going to reveal to Aimstrong that, hey, we're going for this, you know, mono -e mono sniper battle time. That's right. Meanwhile, his sniper up there taking back control of the fuel cutoff. Aimstrong doesn't have a whole lot of map control right now, but he is going to do his best to limit Devim's fuel income. He's going to decap the fuel point there in the south before revealing himself to the Oster sniper. I wonder why he would do that. I guess yeah, he's... I wonder why he didn't keep capping. I guess he just wants to go get was... the strategic point. Yeah. I guess there's no point for him to finish that cap because it's not connected to his territory anyway, and it's not likely to be connected to his territory anytime soon, and he might have been scared of that MG in the other house uh, overlooking the fuel point. I think he could hide from it while capping, but better use of time to pick up those strategic points because they're going to give him income right away. So one thing I noticed about Aimstrong's build here is he's gone with two squads of Royal Engineers. You think that that's probably because it's more of a close range urban map maybe he's going to be able to get that into short range on these team weapons or maybe get some good bursts of damage off on grenadiers yeah i think he's probably going to go double sweeper perhaps so that he doesn't run into mines <laughs> but the more serious answer <laughs> doubling up uh, on the mine sweepers yeah i think just to bleed less from the sniper and also you're right about the, you know the close quarters nature you don't he doesn't want to throw all of his eggs into one basket you know he wants to have some close range combat and he wants to be able to also sit in some green cover with his infantry sections and provide that long range support. So since this map is so big, I think sometimes it turns out to be pretty non-lethal. It's already six minutes in, only 16 kills in total on both sides, so just very cat and mouse so far. 
MG42 is again going to take up a very aggressive position. Walks right up into the engagement head first, leading the way for the Grens, which are coming in from two separate flanks, the south and the north simultaneously. Sniper doesn't want to take a shot. He's He's a little nervous. Rifle grenade going off. Will be dodged. Nice dodge by Aimstrong right there. Vickers continues to lay fire on the MG42, but in green cover, it seems to be doing all right. Nothing of Devims has been suppressed yet, and the sniper has no choice but to retreat when those grenadiers close the distance. The Oster sniper, fortunately, couldn't quite get in range and finish that off. But since it's still on the field and the British sniper is gone, I think Devon will start firing on this church to force Aimstrong to retreat and start maybe getting control of the central area here. The Royal Engineers have not really been able to get any, into close range and make big plays yet. Yeah, Dev M with this very nice flank, very nice push, taking, you know, putting a lot of effort into taking control of the middle of the map, and it looks like it's going to be very, very successful. He's routed pretty much Aimstrong's entire oh, army. Oh no, Sniper's going to take a shot at a retreating one-man squad! Here it comes! <laughs> oh, I missed. And it was a Vickers down in mid, though. 17, 18 for... Amy, hopefully. Not ahead. During all of that, that Vickers dropped yeah. in mid and DevM's recovering, and that's a very big twist of events, especially with how good the Vickers at that one getting extra sight and extra range in the houses. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, the Vickers had to be removed from the qualifiers because of an issue with its VET1 bonus stacking infinitely so the Vickers could fire across the whole map, but even, even without that bug present, that VET1 bonus on a Vickers is really crazy. Yeah, it's going to make it very difficult for our um, for our Brit player Aimstrong here to push into mid because Brits they don't really have great indirect fire options and Devon's actually going to catch Aimstrong building a mine here. It's really late to cancel at least two models. He didn't cancel it at all. I'm just, yeah, he's going to come right. back and finish it later. <laughs> you should definitely not so. let that munition just float. Sniper working yeah, on Grens in the north. So he's already low on munitions as it is. Just DevM with, or sorry, yeah, DevM with just great fuel control this game. It's very hard for Austere to control both fuels on this map generally, but I guess the dynamic's a bit different against Brits because they're not as um, mobile early game as a lot of the other allied factions are with rifles and conscripts just swarming everywhere, capping everything. Yeah, I think Brits on a map of this size where flank engagements are really important are going to struggle just a little bit, whereas on Arnhem Checkpoint, you the, the, the action is more centralized around your HQ. You can generally have a slightly more coordinated defense set up, fighting in one specific direction. I don't know. It's... it's um, it's turning out almost the same way as game two, though, really, with Oster taking a really uh, commanding lead early on. Of course, that one in game two, he was against U.S. forces, not Brits, so it's a totally different dynamic. But Devon's going to go Lightning War, as he always does. Locks that in. Maybe start upgrading G43s. He's already got one in production on one of his grand squads, so that should uh, help him in these urban engagements, certainly, especially against a pretty close-range oriented build from Aimstrong with the two Royal Engineers. And it'll really help to, uh, keep his lead. Yep, it'll really help if he ever gets a flank on the sniper as well. You have the tactical movement, which sprints all your squads, and the G43s are more accurate than I believe any other Oscar weapon on the move. Sniper's making its way down towards the cemetery, trying to trying to line up a counter snipe on the uh, the Oster sniper, which will fire and backpedal around behind the hedge, playing safe with that since he doesn't know where his opponent sniper is, and the scout car is also hovering in the general area, but can't expose itself to the six pounder on the central road. Both of their snipers stop moving. Oster sniper sitting on the fuel out of cover. That's dangerous. MG42 suppressing his uh, Royal Engineers. They're jumping back in the church. Nothing the really decisive sniper happening. sniper is revealing itself. Aimstrong has a beat on him, I believe. Oh no, what is it doing? Sni That's oh. the easiest counter snipe I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. Explodes in a giant shower of idiots. Oh, what was that I'm doing? He, he must have just thought the British sniper was somewhere else or misclick or something. That's going to cost him. But we've seen Devon come back from 
fault of counter snipes. It's really, it's not the end of the world because it's, it's really important to keep in mind that manpower bleed on Brits is so high that even losing a sniper as Oster is, is not, you know, a game swinging loss. Yeah, and DevM's fuel control, like I was mentioning earlier, he's been so good. He's already teched up to Battle Phase 2 and just completed his support armor core. Another minute and a half of income at this rate, and he's going to be able to fuel the Panzer IV. Centaur is about 50 fuel away, so Aimstrong really needs to get that south fuel captured, working on the Royal Engineers now, and he's got commandos coming in, so once those commandos help him push back DevM's assault here in the center, and with DevM's sniper dead, they won't be bled too heavily, hopefully. He should be able to get that Centaur out at um, probably roughly the same time as that Panzer IV. And he's already got one AT gun out to protect, depending on how his manpower fuel balance shakes out. He'll probably make his way to a Centaur double AT gun composition before this game ends. Yeah, and one thing I've really noticed about DevM from casting him recently is he, you know, some Oster players, they're like, oh, it's about 10 to 12 to 14 minutes. I should probably go ahead and pick up a pack because there's a tank on the way. Devem is showing no signs of spending manpower on a pack. I honestly wouldn't even be surprised if he, if he fielded another sniper before he even got any more AT. Me, speaking of snipers, Aimstrong working on the uh, machine gun up there in the north, but he only takes one shot and then backs off. I think he's more focused on uh, getting mid here, keeping the mid VP, keeping one of the mid strat points, and the map's turning blue very, very fast ever since the loss of that Austere Sniper, and, you know, DevM banking just a little bit for his Panzer IV, which is, I think, about another minute away. There goes the M2 in the north. And uh, I think not only the loss of his sniper is what lost in that, but also these commandos hitting the field, and they have a, real, a lot of shock value, and Devon's not going to want to engage against them without the full force of his army, for sure. Well, especially in the middle of this map, when it's so close quarters, and the uh, commandos get to cloak up, he's not exactly sure where they are. And even Demo MGs can have a hard time. MVP. Oh, that could be brutal if he virus on that. But like, even MGs can have a problem countering commandos because if they're running around in green cover, stealth they're so speedy, and green cover doesn't really suppress unless you shoot them for a long, long time. Two, two, two is gonna try and make something happen here without the support of a tank or anything. That oh, MG that machine gun is dying dangerous. so fast. No chance. Wow, he just crewed it with his commandos. That's expensive. He won't be able to engage with them. Uh, he has to retreat because he just did that. I'm surprised he didn't try and run up another squad from somewhere, but I guess he thought stealing that team weapon was valuable enough to lose any further engagement potential there. Well, it's no more sense uh -oh. than recruiting with infantry section. Royal Engineers either, might get wiped right here. They just got caught on the south fuel by those G43s. Scout cars on its way to try and hunt them down. No auto cannon shots connect, and it took, an, took a, too long of a route, so they'll get away narrowly. I was going to say, I think the commandos are only 35 to reinforce, right? That's the same exact as an infantry section picking up the yeah. MG. That, that's not cheap. <laughs> well, no, no, for sure. It's an infantry but, section. I think it was either the commandos or I have to take the infantry section out of his house, and either way it's 35 manpower, but like, just good luck flanking a commando crewed MG-42. They're just going to kill you when you get there. Centaurs in production. Meanwhile, the entire map has turned blue. Aimstrong really taking control now that he now that he has commandos out, and Devim hasn't got really much of a counter since he for their snipers. P4 coming out now. That uh, that's gonna give you know that's gonna give Devim a tool against the Centaur. But there's already an AT gun now. There's probably gonna be another one fielded as soon as he spots the Panzer IV. The Centaur even does kind of. <laughs> Kind of surprisingly good damage to Panzer Force, so I I don't know. Devim's in a rough a rough situation here. Do you think he's going to be able to come back from this? So, Aimstrong might be trying to give Devim a little taste of his own medicine. There are a lot of mines strewn around the middle area of this map. His AT gun was on a mine until a second ago. I thought that could have gone very awry if like the P4 drove up, shot the AT gun, and decrewed by the mine. But Devim does not have a sweeper. Did you catch? Uh, did you catch Paul versus? Uh, I don't remember who it was, but he swept a mine and then parked his tiger on top of it anyway. And then uh, yeah. some random shot blew it up, damaged his engine, and then a bomb run came in, 
destroyed his tiger, so even friendly mines uh, <laughs> pose a very serious threat sometimes. I think that was against uh, Vindy, right? Right, Vindy, yes, thank you. So this 2 2 is so close to that mine, how is he not hitting it yet? Centaur's right, making its presence in there, I think. Going into the center, the Panzer that IV is driving around right miraculously. Whoa, what was that? Squad wipe, squad wipe. One man. Yeah, Bren ran right into the mine. Speeding over the mine, gets wiped. Panzer IV miraculously doesn't hit that one on the road. The scout car also somehow <laughs> manages to skirt past the mall. This center area is littered with mines. But Devum isn't punished too horribly, although losing a Grenadier squad isn't something he can afford right now. <laughs> you forgot a little lucky break there is and killed a mine near the commandos rather than running over it. But yeah, I mean Devum has lost a lot. He's down to two grands, finally calling in his AT gun, and we've seen what centaurs can do to AT guns, and it's not yeah. not pretty. Panzer IV absolutely has to destroy the Centaur. It's the only thing Devon has that can handle that unit. And it's at half health, so it's not really in a great position to be doing that. G43s take control of the cutoff house. They've beaten an infantry section there, doing excellent damage, but obviously with the Centaur the way it is right now, cannot stick around in buildings for more than even one burst without just getting annihilated. Well, the Centaur's wow, probably going to catch this 222 on the ice and kill it. Now, Amshong needs to not go on the ice, though, because that pack could sink it. All right, he's very wise pulling it back. Yeah, this is kind of the issue that I uh, mentioned earlier, where if Amstrong gets a hold on the middle of this map, especially with Devin playing from the north, it's going to be very, very difficult for him to be able to push into the center of the map, and he has a long way to go if he wants to go for the northern portion. It's pretty amazing how important snipers are. <laughs> I mean, Devon was winning this game and then lost his sniper and everything fell apart from there. The, the game swung completely around in Amstrong's favor because of that one pivotal moment. And from then on, he, then he dropped some commandos, then he po popped out a centaur, and just Devon can't seem to keep up. He's fielding himself a sniper now. I wonder if maybe he should have done that a long time ago. Seems like an interesting choice to combat a centaur and all of this infantry. Like we already saw what Amsong's commandos did to Devon's snipers in game one. You could also say we saw what Devon's snipers did to Amstrong's commandos. <laughs> you know, and there's a lot true, of back yeah. and forth there, and I think Devon feels that he needs that as a really powerful anti-infantry unit. If he could counter snipe the sniper, if he could lead the commandos, I mean. You have to make bold decisions when you're behind, otherwise there, you'll just coast into a loss. Yeah, I guess picking up another pack's not exactly an option, and going for more Grenadiers against a Centaur is probably even worse than getting a Sniper against a Centaur, because at least the Sniper can try to avoid it and get some bleed, whereas the Grens are just going to get flopped as soon as they come into range. Cromwell on the field for Amstrong next, so he's not going to wait for Firefly or some sort of Comet or... Churchill or anything like that. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah, the snipers Sniper. are so close to each other in mid. Devon gets revealed right next to the Cromwell, though. Scout car goes down, trying to, I guess, eat up shots for the sniper. I don't know. He didn't retreat. The snipers are so close. Devon is about to shoot. What's he shooting at? He's shooting and he's out of cover. What is he thinking with that play? Fortunately, the British sniper looks like it's blocked by that little fence or something. <laughs> the Worcester Maybe sniper the makes its way back into cover, and the Cromwell is in trouble. The Panzer IV and AT gun going on it at the same time. The AT gun couldn't quite find the line right there. Shot misses right around the shed, and the British sniper is exposed. Retreats a little late, but the Panzer IV doesn't connect. Commandos clear the AT gun with the light gammon bomb. And a yeah, six pounder dangerously low. shots the P4 from way across and it is destroyed. And I think that's GG. That's it. I think Devm throws in the towel, losing the P4, losing the AT gun, and seeing you know, him up against a Centaur and the Cromwell and the entire map being not his color. Well, 
20 minute victory there for aim strong he wins with 321 vps in the bank so he is now way in the lead for victory points he's gonna have um 821 to devm's 192 <laughs> so i guess even if devm were to get a 500 vp victory going into game four there is no mathematical way he could ever have any advantage in the ace game if it goes that far so he's very behind the pressures on he will have to win two games in a row and he'll have to win the ace game without any form of faction selection yep. also uh the chat's pointing out dev m accidentally built two tier twos two light mechanized companies in his base rather than one and a tier three so that's just a little bit of fuel down the drain and i mean that oh. amount of fuel that could be another that thing is you know, it's kind of funny, but I've actually seen that happen, I think, yeah. twice in other tournaments I've run. That's that's how high the tension is. That's how the pressure people yeah. make that. He could have had a Stug. He could have had a Stug in that last engagement to help finish <laughs> off the Cromwell. It's such a uh, oh, what was I thinking? Kind of thing, but yeah, he doesn't have he's to kick himself for that. He's, he's not the first person to to do that, and he won't be the last. All right, so um, this series is starting to starting to get pretty heated. A lot of pressure on Dev M. He's gonna have to he's gonna have to execute flawlessly from this point forward. Short break, and we're going going to uh, get into game four. Bye, everybody. We'll be right back.